In this episode, I award Luffy the Entomology Badge for seeing a scorpion tail and poking it with a stick to see what would happen. Surprise, it was a scorpion. Welcome to the journey. Welcome to the crew. We think we're pretty funny, and we hope that you will too. This is the opening song to season two. It's where the journey really starts because we've made it out of East Blue. We've got our snacks and we've got our friends. Now it's time to discuss the anime that never ends. Yeah! Start the show! Hello, fellow adventurers of the Grand Line, and welcome to episode 38 of King of the What Now, a podcast where we discuss One Piece, usually the anime, but also we sneak in discussions about the manga in here and there. I'm your host, Joel, also captain of the ship. Also, I was pretending to be a rebel soldier so that people would give me food, but then I ran into some real hardened criminals that punched me so hard, I found my courage in the back of my throat. And, uh, there's usually another guy with me, um... Hey, Curtis, you're, uh, why are you hiding behind that fern that fails to conceal you? Shh. I'm slowly following my daughter to make sure she's okay. Ah, okay. Wonderful. Uh, what would you say, how would you describe your rank on this crew? Uh, yeah, so I, I am Curtis, and I am a known newbie. Well, is that true anymore? Because we've been saying for a while now that once you get to 100 episodes, you can't really consider yourself a newbie newbie. Dude. I think a promotion is in order. I get to get promoted? Is yeah. It, is, is there a fanfare, Joel? Um, uh, rank up. <gasps> the word showed up in burning letters in the sky. I don't know if I should be worried or thrilled, but at any point, uh, we have, I bestow upon you the title of One Piece Novice. Yes! Oh, snap, we reached the 100th episode. 100 episodes. I wasn't going to be on this episode, but I will now. That's a big milestone. Mm, baba, 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 mm, baba, 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 speak, apparition. Yeah, yeah ghost, wait. checking in. Hello. Who are you? Ghost. Okay, did we do that already? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, we did. Ah, so spooky. All right, everyone. <laughs> so... <laughs> oh man, we are we are just having a grand old time over here, which is perfect. You want to have a grand time on the grand line. I oh to say that. snap. Well, I beat you to it, unfortunately. Alright, so we just finished watching episodes 98, 99, 100, and 101. If you are watching at home, that means you gotta see the episode with the sand pirates. And then you got to see some more stories that really didn't feel connected at all, except for the fact that the Straw Hats were in it. And it ended with uh, the duel between Ace and the uh, gallant Scorpion. You got to see some episodes with some sand. Yeah. That's just a true statement about the arc. I mean, that is absolutely, that's that's a blanket truth of the Alabasta saga. And that's honestly how we managed to keep um, Anakin from coming on as our fourth co-host. You stole my joke! Oh! <laughs> uh, two for yeah. two! God, you're on a roll, man. All right. You know, the uh, best way for me to steal punchlines, or to stop stealing punchlines, is for someone else to do the talking. If and he's on a roll, is he butter? No, he is a large ball of dung. Eh, oh, that was actually really mean. I'm sorry. It was a <laughs> reference to the episode. Are you saying that I'm a medium small of d- ball of dung? <laughs> I'm not even, I'm not worthy of being, of crushing a hundred people every year. <laughs> Joel, you could crush as many people as a very extra large ball yes, of dung. Yes, fantastic. All right, I would like you to summarize these episodes. Well, you took most of it in the description <laughs> of the episodes because I wasn't going to talk much. Um. So they were in the desert and stuff happened. Um, okay, so first two episodes were about sand pirates. No, first episode. What, just every single one of these episodes oh, was a self-contained right. story. First episode was sand pirates. It's yes. a, they, they sail around on a boat in the desert. They basically pod race is the joke that you were making. Uh, well, yeah, well, that was, that was mostly, um, because they, they, they were like racing they had the, the little riders. skiffs. Yep. Yeah. Um, Stuff. I mean, how I, I'm gonna just gloss over this. We can come back because it's really. I'm gonna give you the the like the ten thousand foot view. Yeah, the ten thousand foot view is that this country kind of sucks right now, and a lot of people are sad. Yeah, like that's really you can summarize these four. Well, episodes. there were a lot of happy people considering how sad they are. That's true. Um. Okay. Yeah. So first episode 
or I guess the episode 98. Uh, yes. Um, sand pirates. Uh, they start off on a bad foot. They get along in the end and they're all good by the end of the episode. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Second episode. So episode 99, they end up at a, uh, a town that is being protected by re- part of the rebel army, quote unquote. Uh, it turns out it's just a bunch of like street punks who decided that they wanted to, um, benefit. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, Basically, they were like, hey, if we tell these people we're part of the rebel army and say we'll protect them, nobody's coming to attack them. We're okay. We'll just get a bunch of free food. Yeah. And the reason that they didn't have enough food and they wanted, they were so desperate for it was because of the sad state of the country. So they do that. Um, Ace finds them and through things happening, basically, they did. So Vivi, princess, feels obligated to make sure these people are protected. She says, I want to test them to make sure that they are going to actually try to protect these people and not just flake out and leave. So the Straw Hats fake an attack on the the town and the four members of the rebel army come out and uh, initially they were going to run, um, but the Straw Hats surround them. So Luffy punches the main guy and that causes him to remember like when he was a kid and he wanted to be a great warrior that defended Alabasta. Mm -hmm. So he stands back up and he comes out and he's going to fight Luffy. Um, And then all that inspires everyone else to stand up and fight. And then at that point, Vivi is convinced these people will help. So then they all retreat and leave, even though Luffy doesn't really get that. This is like a, like a bit a play. Yeah. Yeah. They all yell things like, Oh no, they're too strong for us. Except for Zoro who goes, whatever. I'm not good at this. Yeah. He just runs. (laughs) Um, so yeah, this, then they leave and that's, that's that episode. The third one is an, a flashback episode with the, with two bits of hijinks from the rest of the crew. That one is episode 100. It is officially, in my opinion, the best episode of One Piece so far. It's definitely the funniest. It's, Baby BB is so yes. cute. So it's got, it's a, it's a flashback and it's got, you know, little VV and a friend that she makes named, uh, Koza? Koza. Koza. Um, Leader. Yeah. Uh, and they like, they basically become friends because they fight and then uh, they, they're they co-leaders of this this group of kids. Child called the, gang. Yeah, called the San San Clan. Um, and the, the my favorite gag in the whole thing is um, Igaram is, Igaram and the king are both following to make sure she's okay. And they're like in the, they're like holding little shrubs in front of them. And the King has this bandana tied over his head and it doesn't disguise him at all. (laughs) And so there's one day Vivi goes up to the, the parents of Koza. It's like, where's Koza at? And you know, like he's over at the usual spot. And so she runs off and it's like, thanks. And then Igaram goes by (laughs) like crouched, (laughs) even though everyone can see him there. And the parents are like, do you want any food? And he's like, no, I packed a lunch. And he just like scoots off. And then the king comes by and doing the same thing, trying to hide from both the kid and Igram. <laughs> yep. it's, it's, oh, it's so good. And he doesn't say anything. He just holds up a single finger to his mouth yeah. in the shush motion. Yeah. And then I, on top of that, so I, I wasn't going to give it best, best one piece since there's not much straw hats, except that they have little bits of the straw hats hijinks. Like when you're not in flashback and it's like, it's enough to give you like, oh yeah, this is a One Piece episode, and give you a taste of that. And it's like it's just them fighting off a scorpion and cooking and eating it, and it's great. It's it's an awesome episode. It's pretty great. And then there was a fourth episode. Yes, the fourth episode um, had the Wily Coyote. Yeah, <laughs> basically. <laughs> yeah, Wily Coyote, and then uh, Ace was the Road Runner. Yep. Um, Wily Coyote in this case was a guy of a <laughs> a bounty hunter. Quote unquote. We have a bunch of these quote unquote people. Uh huh. Um, these quote unquote <laughs> people. Are you denying that they exist? Like, I mean, yes. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> they are. They are animated. Joel. Okay, that's that's Joel, true. Joel. Yeah. One Piece isn't real. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? I, wait, I, wait. I'm sorry. Wait. Is Naruto also not real? No, Naruto's no. real. They're just hidden in the village, in the leaves. You can't see them. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. One Piece is real in, in your heart. heart. Yep. The One Piece was the friends we made along the way. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so... What was I going with this? Oh, yeah, so the last one, uh, 
you got the the scorpion. Uh, what was it? The gallant scorpion, mm-hmm. um, who is trying to capture Ace. The only reason we find out is because he is a dad with two sons who, so they're farming, right? And the sons are like, our dad gave up on his dream of being a bounty hunter so that we could have food. And wow, dreams... what a sucky parent. Yeah. <laughs> and that just shows that dreams are for suckers and they're not real. No one gets to fulfill their dreams in real life. Life is life is sucky, mm-hmm. right? And that's like, no, that can't be the lesson you learn. I'm going to go take down Ace, this amazing pirate with a large bounty that we don't see because it's cut off of the, the poster. Mm. Um, and uh, I think it ends with, they, they end the fight because Ace would have killed him. Uh, but then he almost kills himself. But then Ace saves him. Okay, well, then... hang on. Almost kills himself by accident. Because just in the kind of oh, way you were oh, summarizing. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it was, this was not a suicide attempt. It was, in fact, a uh, he had a bazooka pointed at Ace. And he's like, no, I'm not going to do it. And he tosses the bazooka to the side. And then the bazooka shoots up at the rock above them. Like, there's a giant rock in the a middle pillar. of the desert. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, fragments start falling. It's going to, you know, kill him and his kids. And then Ace saves them. So, yes. yeah, thank you for clarifying <laughs> that. <laughs> just, yep. <laughs> Um, yeah, and that's, that's that. So that was a great summary, uh, pretty succinct, uh, yeah, they weren't I, really connected to each other. No, that, no, they weren't. Uh, I was, one, one final note on the episodes. Yeah. I would give all of these episodes a description of, um, how did I describe it? <laughs> uh, I think it was filler and spirit, but not in execution. Yeah, no, was filler, filler and spirit, but not in content. Ah, uh, okay. So there was a lot of important stuff in there, because like the last battle, so, okay, so the reason that um, Ace came to Alabasta uh-huh. was because he thought Blackbeard was here. It turns out the Scorpion had put out rumors that he had fought and defeated Blackbeard, which is the re- what drew Ace here. So yes. now Ace is leaving because his mission can't be fulfilled in Alabasta. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. that part, like that bit of why is Ace not here, I mean, that's, a, that's obviously not filler because... Otherwise, Ace would just disappear from the group. It's like, okay, I guess Ace isn't here anymore. Okay. Um, I think the backstory on Koza, because we find out that Koza, um, the kid that uh, Vivi befriends, is also the rebel, rebel leader. leader. Mm-hmm. Um, that's important information. The second one we saw, what, I guess I'm just going to go backwards, um, is probably the most likely to be filler out of all of them. I feel like that one, well, no, because they got, no, I guess the supplies don't matter. The, 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 that, that one and the Sand Pirates are probably the more likely ones to be filler. Okay, okay. Uh, so, officially, three of those four episodes were filler. Oh, really? The Sand Pirates did not exist. The fake Rebels did not exist. Yes, I got those two. All of the Koza flashback, completely canon. Episode 100, straight from the manga. Episode 101 is largely non-canon. Uh, uh, the Gallant Scorpion does not exist. There were no... Uh. He didn't f- create fake rumors of Blackbeard. Blackbeard did come through Alabasta, but he's already gone. I don't know how Ace finds out about that in the manga. There's two things from that episode that are canon, and that is Ace leaving and Ace giving that gift, the weird paper, to Luffy before he left. That exists. Yeah, and then he it was like a blank piece of paper and he said this will be how we find each other again and yep. no explanation. Why would he give explanation? That doesn't make any sense. Do you have any ideas on that, Curtis? Any theories? Uh, I mean, maybe it's Doctor Who psychic th- psychic Okay, so Luffy will look down and it'll have a message written on it that Ace somehow sent to him. Yeah, or it'll have like the black spot appear if Ace is near. (laughs) Um, Oh, that would be so in tune with like pirate lore. I like that. Yeah, Mm -hmm. Uh, I I don't know. You know, I'm not. I don't. I don't know. I I I can only like speculate. I it's going to be something that I'm not going to guess. I'm guessing. It's it's kind of. (laughs) fun for joel and i i think to see something important and know that you have no context you have no reason to be able to guess what it is and still ask you to guess because you come up with some interesting things maybe here's what it is okay ace has the flare flare slash flame flame fruit okay Uh um I'm just going to call it Flame Flame from here on out. Okay. By the way, if, I think that's the official manga translation, oh, so I'll okay. keep that as the source of truth. If I say Flare Flare, then we know what we're, all ta- what we're talking yeah. about. Um, the number of times we've accidentally called one character by another character's name, I think we'll be fine from <laughs> Flare Flare and Flame Flame. True. Um, maybe what you do 
is you just you cut off a little piece and you light it on fire and then that's like a beacon to Ace. Mm-hmm. It says, Ace, come quickly. I need your help. So it's the pirate equivalent of the Batman signal for Ace specifically. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I was thinking more like the uh, the the snow globe from the Santa Claus. Do you remember that? I unfortunately don't remember that specific aspect. Yeah, of those yeah. Movies. So he gives he gives his son a little snow globe, and he's like, "If you shake it, that'll let me know that you you want me to see you want to see me, and then I'll show up at your house." Okay, interesting. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So what? How did you like these filler episodes? Uh. Well. Okay. So episode one hundred, I said was best episode. That one I liked. I liked aspects of them, but I think we all made the comment that especially with the scorpion fight one, we were kind of, this, this might be more of like us being at the end of a recording session than anything else, but okay, we were struggling to stay awake through it. Um, mm-hmm. it's, it's not that it's that one, that one wasn't super exciting. Um, this, the pirates one, the sand pirates also wasn't super great. I enjoyed yeah. the middle two more, though. Even the, even the 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 village with the um the fake yeah with soldiers. the fake robots yeah, who that was actually good quality filler, right? It was interesting. It stuck with the One Piece theme, um, and it was you know entertaining the the whole premise of it, the way they went about it, the way Luffy was pretending to be this deranged villain or whatever, and he had like the grin on his face. That was great. Yeah, I don't think he was pretending. Because at some point they offer them like a hundred million berry to go away, and Luffy goes, "Oh, really?" And all of his crew is like, "That's obviously a lie." And then he gets really angry because, "How dare you lie to me?" I think he <laughs> forgot it was a game. <laughs> well, it was the it was the um, when he, when they said we have a hundred million pe- more people in the there we in go. the town. That's what it yeah. Was. I did not pay attention to that episode because I knew it was filler, and I apologize. I will say that I find mid-arc filler to be especially frustrating because we have a goal. We have a place where the story is going, and any distraction from that is annoying. Mm -hmm, Go mm -hmm. back to what you're doing. It does make the desert feel a lot bigger. I don't know how big it felt in the manga when you're reading through, but for in the anime, the fact that we've spent four episodes in this desert now is like, this is a big freaking desert, right? (laughs) Of course... The map they show at the beginning of each episode doesn't make it look that That's big. so helpful. Yeah, and so when the the map is an interesting, I don't want to call it a gimmick, it's a new pattern that these episodes have followed. And when it first showed up, those episodes we, we didn't watch together, we weren't sitting in the same room, you sent a text to me and Catherine that said, hey, so this map, is that going to just stick around for a while? And we said, yeah, it's there for the rest of the series, pretty much. <laughs> uh, not well, every... Hmm? I was just going to... No, go ahead. You finish. Not every episode has this map. Every episode in Alabasta, I think, for the rest of time will have it. Uh, but then once we get off of Alabasta, they won't immediately have a new map. It takes a while. Mm-hmm. But as soon as they land on an island and it's kind of like this is where the main battle is going to happen or the main conflict is eventually going to unfold... They're going to get separated at some point. They're going to show a map that shows, like, little tiny uh, green ball for Zoro and a brown ball for Chopper's fur. And it'll be like, Zoro and Chopper got lost, and they went up river. And then it'll show, and Nami got kidnapped again by a giant pelican. It'll show the orange dot moving in a oh, way okay. and stuff. Yeah, because I, I thought maybe it was because I was watching the, the uh, subbed sub- version mm-hmm. And not the dubbed one. And I didn't, and it, so it was by what, Toy Animation? Yes. Instead of, uh, um, Funimation. Funimation. So my, my initial thought was you got, there was, I think it was the four kids you said had like a last time on. Mm, yes. So I thought maybe, well, maybe the Japanese version had a previous summary that like the. Oh, we hadn't the, seen yet because we've always been watching in the dub. Yeah. So okay. I thought it was maybe that. Interesting. Uh, yeah. No, it's, it's here for, um, all of our, um, all future arcs will probably have something like it. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's here to stay. Oh, fun. Uh huh. We eventually lose the endings as well. They decide that the opening is more important and they make the openings about twice as long, which is, uh, you know, if you like them, that's great. If you don't like them, that's not so great. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hundredth episode. We have made it to the one hundredth episode. We're like a ninth of the way through the series by volume. Yeah, that actually does feel like a pretty big accomplishment. How long have you guys been doing this podcast now? 
a while. Less than a year. Less than a year, but almost a year. Since I think something like that. March, I think. Since Comic Con. Mm-hmm. So whenever Comic Con was. Um Curtis, hundred episodes in, is this show living up to the hype? Uh yeah, I could see why Joel likes it so much. I it's um because my initial impression of it was more along the lines of the East Blue. And so I was like, I don't see why Joel would put so much time and energy into this 900 series. episodes of these little yeah. tiny arcs. I yeah. mean, at some point I, I was just assumed, well, I guess he's just so invested at this point he doesn't want to. Yeah, I can't admit that it's a uh, it's a sunk cost. Yeah. I like, I've already put so much time and energy into it. Um, but no, I can see it now. There, there's it's it is a very interesting show and I do enjoy the the culture like the 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 fandom that's mm. developed around it. Um, I guess not that I interact with the fandom that much, but like the the idea that uh there are a lot of people and like who are willing to put up with all these filler episodes and that because it's like a thing that they do as a group, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Is it's a I we get suffer it more. together type of thing. <laughs> yeah, because because we... like, could you imagine like if a TV show was coming out today and it was just like we're just gonna put out like forty really crappy episodes, everybody watch. Like, mm-hmm. no, it would it would mm-hmm. bomb. But this thing is like this invested community around it that they can afford to put out that sort of stuff. And uh, I mean, that's not necessarily an argument for doing it, but you get you get my drift, right? It's mm-hmm. it. There very much is a sense of community in the One Piece fandom. I've been doing a lot of the social media outreach. I'm very active on Twitter, and I interact with some of our favorite uh one piece theorist joy boy attacking people like that and it's amazing how nice everyone is and how excited they all are about this same thing um so it's it's really just a privilege to be a part of such a huge decade spanning community yes i will say this too it's very exciting to try and ask the what if questions in the one piece world because there's so many wacky things that happen one of my favorite things to see on Twitter occasionally, and when I say favorite, I don't necessarily mean that I enjoy participating in it, and I think that the argument in the end is kind of silly, because it's not really what the story is about, but questions like, well, could Ace have defeated Crocodile? Would he have a reason to? How much time does Crocodile have to prepare? There's there's later very powerful people that show up, and people will try and figure out how they would do against each other. Mm-hmm. And it's like, guys, come on, what the heck? But those are unanswerable questions that will continue to be sources of debate among the fans forever. Yeah, I mean, it's like the the like doing a uh, Superman, so oh. could, like who would win, Superman or the Hulk, or like can the Hulk pick up uh, the Mjolnir or whatever? Yeah, that, that it's like that sort of stuff, right? Or I guess Captain America is probably the better one. But anyway, you get my point, right? Like mm-hmm. it's a, it's fan questions that people like they somebody sets up this universe and they try to figure out like what are the the mechanisms? How how would this work? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There is a subreddit called One Piece Circle Jerk. And it's people being, like, super snarky slash uh, joking about that kind of, like, well, if Luffy had the glue-glue fr- fruit instead of the gum-gum fruit, do you think that he could, uh, it, do you think he'd take insults more personally? It's just stupid stuff like that. And it's very fun. Uh, yeah, they'll do things like, all right, so obviously we know that, uh, um, Buggy and Usopp and Nazumi, the no-name marine person who showed up during the Arlong Park arc, obviously those three are the power trinity of the series, and if they ever join forces, would they mm. be able to take down, uh, Whitebeard's entire fleet? Of course they would, but it would take all the dramatic tension out of the, uh, the I series. Read, I read a five-paragraph essay once on how... Buggy is Luffy's mom. <laughs> that just that sums up this conversation for me. You so, know what? Can we just can we just Well, sorry, go on. No, okay, can I can I have a brief moment of uh of um fanfic? Yeah, okay. So let's say we got an organization, right? Mm-hmm. Three people in a hierarchy. At the top is a guy, his name is Words. The next two down are stick and, sticks and stones. Do you think sticks and stones would be able to break Luffy's bones? But words, even though he could defeat everyone else, would not be able to hurt him. Uh, <laughs> yes. Words can't hurt Luffy, 
Not because Luffy is made of rubber, but because Lu- uh, Words is at the top of the hierarchy and he's too busy to fight someone directly. Mm. Mm. Okay. And I so- think we're just going to say because he's oblivious. And I was about to listen. say, is Luffy stupid? Like, do, does Words <laughs> use too many big words? And so he's just like, eh, I don't care. Oh, quick flashback to these episodes we just watched. Uh, the children of the bounty hunter Scorpion are literally named Chips and Dip. And no, they, Chip just and chi- dip. Chip and Dip. And they run a potato farm. And I'm pretty sure that their dad was hungry when naming them because, I mean, come on. Are you yeah. kidding me? That's actually kind of torturous. If, like, if you know you're going to have a hard time feeding your kids, naming them Chip and Dip, that's like naming <laughs> them like, like, uh, like I don't know, like uh, fe- feast and um, yeah. or being um, you know uh, impoverished or whatever, not really sure how much how many opportunities you have to kind of climb the economic uh, ladder and calling them like riches and fortune, you know, just yeah. like come on, man, what the heck? Um, Joel, I had a quick question for you. So yeah. a lot of One Piece anime filler. There, there's two kinds of filler, right? There's filler that is 100% filler. Oda wasn't involved in it at all. It's definitely not canon. And then there's filler that was never in the manga, but it wasn't in the manga because Oda didn't have time to put it in the manga. Do you know anything about these two episodes and whether uh, they fall into one of those camps? Uh, you guys need to stop asking me this question because as far as I'm aware, the only filler, as far as I'm aware, the only filler that was like that where Oda wanted to include it but didn't was the daddy fight from from Logetown. I have not heard anything else in terms of the episodes. None of the movies count as canon. Uh, that's just, that's established. You don't have to try to play the guessing game. But uh, some of the later ones, the last three that have come out, uh, Strong World, Film Z, and One Piece Film Gold, were helped directed by Oda, and he designed the characters, and I believe that the characters exist. So, for example... Let's say for, uh, Luffy meets uh, Captain Blue of the Marines in Strong World. Uh, captain Blue is a character that exists. He has the rank of Captain, if that's the rank he has in the movie. But Luffy didn't go to that island and punch him or fight mm. him the way that he did in the movie. Gotcha. So the the characteristic, the traits, and the history is uh, is canon. Such. I apologize for ask, always asking you this question. I just find it really interesting. Um, I'm not going to name the arc because I don't want Curtis to know that it's filler going in. But you're but thinking there, of... There is a specific arc that people hold up as like one of the best One Piece arcs. Yeah, because it's filler. one of the best arcs and it is filler. I love that arc. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Also, we've now gotten to the point where they're so desperate for content in their One Piece episodes that they will insert uh half episodes of or like they'll have an episode that's half filler and half regular. Mm-hmm. So nothing is safe anymore. Uh expect the frequency of the filler to possibly start increasing from now on. Uh earlier in the series you said that, oh, it's it's a little too early to have filler and yeah, and we're no longer in the early days. <laughs> that's gone. <laughs> I feel like a like a old gruff veteran now. Mm, like mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I remember back in the days when things were easy, <laughs> but that's no more. You've got kind of the grizzled beard, a scar mm. over one eye. Boy, when I was your age, we didn't have eighteen members of the Straw Hat crew, and there was no angel that could shoot lightning from her eyes. All we had was a cook and a swordsman. Filler dragon took my hand. <laughs> you think you can get that back? No, it's filler. It's gone. <laughs> if you die in filler, you die for real. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, okay. So, <laughs> I actually realized I had two very important questions that I wanted to talk to you about in the last episode of the podcast. Mm. Can we all just agree that these four episodes, the, the uh, episode 100 was great. Can we Yay. agree, though, that the other three, not as much, yeah. not as gripping? I agree. Okay. Do you, Wait, real quick. Yeah. Do you think they made the non-filler good episode 100 on purpose so that I'm it would line up with... I'm almost positive. Uh, the reason that he took the daddy fight out of Logetown was specifically because he wanted the Straw Hats to enter the Grand Line on Chapter 100. Mm. So I think that it's very important. There's... um. 
Oh god, I can't, I don't know how to explain this without giving away too many spoiler details, but there's something that happens in, I'm gonna pick a random number, chapter 113. Luffy goes, alright, I've mastered Kung Fu. And you're like, okay, cool power, Luffy. And then in chapter 311, the numbers were switched and reversed. He goes, alright, I've learned um, jujitsu, and you go, well, that's interesting. You have two times where Luffy made this declaration, and it happened in the chapters when the numbers were switched, and there are some people who believe that is completely yeah. serious. There will have characters that will show up who have a badge on that just says, like, uh, you know, uh, 219, and some people will take that and actually look at chapter 219 and try and see if there's anything that didn't uh, fit or anything yeah. that looks like a badge. And they're like, aha, we can prove that this police officer with 213 or 219 is actually the brother of that character who showed up but never actually did anything. Mm. It, it goes that's, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, Sorry, you had questions. I I have many questions, you know. Uh, which is better, a taco or a baked potato? A uh, taco. Um, that, how is that a I question? Don't know. Look, look, look. Science can't answer these questions. No, There's baked no... potatoes suck. Hey, you take it back. This isn't a food or a podcast. Oh, but Sanji. I mean, kinda. If Sanji cooked a baked potato, if... but Luffy baked the taco, I guarantee you'd be picking the baked potato. Yeah, no, no. It, it, it <laughs> I, I, it's probably because I, I don't know if my parents listen to this podcast at this point. It's probably because I just had bad baked potatoes growing up. You know, but, that's entirely possible. Yeah, yeah. I I don't remember what food it was, but at one point I ate something with Kath, and I'm like, this can be good? And she looked at me like I was crazy, and she's like, it's always been good. Yeah. I had I had no idea. Um, We're going to go back to the questions that we wanted. I wanted to talk about in the last episode. We found out that Portgus is... Ace. I don't know why I did that. We found out that Porcus D. Ace's middle name is the D. He's a member of the D clan. Yes. Uh, we know that Luffy is a member of the D clan. Uh, was I and Goldie. Say and Goldie Roger. Again, three is not the largest data set to try and, you know, find correlations from. But uh, do you think that there's anything that you could say about the will of D at this point or the clan of D? Any similarities between all three of them? Hmm. Excuse me. You're excused. Oh, okay. <laughs> Get um, out. Uh, I think you you asked me this off mic, and I haven't put much thought into it since then. Hey, no worries. Um, I don't know. I can't really. To be honest, like, I mean, uh, Luffy and Ace have similar aesthetics. Uh huh. Um, like they're at least tangential, right? Um. That could also just be that they're brothers. Though. Yeah, then that's what I was gonna say. It's like I don't have enough. Um, they're all strong. I, they have similar. They have similar like world. I don't actually. I don't know what Ace's worldview is. He hasn't really talked <laughs> about it at all. I know what it is. Okay. They all have black hair. There you go. That's all you need in order to figure out if someone is a member oh. of the D clan or not. What if it's what if it's like borderline dark brown black? Why are you asking this question? Because I have my hair is like somewhere in there. <laughs> no, Curse, your middle initial black. isn't. Oh my god! It is. <laughs> Curtis, the prophecy has been fulfilled. Do you believe in dreams? Do you chase your dream no matter the cost? Do you put your life on the line for your dream? Uh, well, I, I, I have taken a lot of melatonin all at once, once just to get to sleep. Does that count as putting my life on my, on the line for dream? I'm just oh, kidding, by the man. way. I have not done that. I actually don't know. Like, can you? You cannot overdose on melatonin. Okay, good. Well, that's, that's good to know. This fun fact brought to you by this new medical podcast. None of us are doctors. <laughs> <laughs> Please do not take uh, these people's advice. One of us is closer to being a doctor than the rest of them, but not not in the diagnostic. Not a medical kind of doctor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I'm a mm -hmm. brain person. <laughs> That's right. She's coming for your brain. I'm in a lipid. <gasps> she's a zombie. Which actually is a great segue into this week's uh, uh, ad. Um, so we all know that monsters are kind of cool. Kind of sexy, kind of uh, scary. You know, depends on what kind of monster, depends on what kind of medium. It, it, there's different interpretations, that sort of thing. 
But the problem is, is that they want to eat your brains or pluck out your eyes or, or do all sorts blood. of yeah, suck your blood. monstrous things. They want to do monstrous things. And so uh, we found a way, not we, this company found a way to miniaturize the monsters and keep them rooted in one place inside what? of a, yeah, it's amazing. So we all know about having a garden. We all know about having that ficus on your desk that you water every day and Honestly, you should probably remember to water it a little bit more. But now we have the new technology to have potted monsters. No, 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 no. I've seen Little Shop of Horrors. I know where this is going. They don't offer you things. They're just... I don't have to give them blood in exchange for my dreams? Well, the vampire demands blood. You don't have to give it to him, though. I mean, the vampire would die. Yeah, if you want to oh. keep him alive, you do have to supply blood. But he doesn't... They don't get much bigger. They're very miniature. Uh, I would say that they are probably about the size of the palm of your hand for most mm, people. Okay. Uh, if you watered them a lot or you you gave them an excessive... If you, if you, if you blooded them a lot. <laughs> yeah, if you, exactly. They might grow a little bit bigger, but no more than a foot in, in height and that sort of thing. Okay, that makes me feel better. We're not talking an Audrey 2 situation. More of just a cute little monster that yeah, lives on your desk and exactly. screams at your coworkers. So, I mean, it really depends on what you're trying to get out of this, right? Do you want an alarm clock style uh, buddy? Because you could get the banshee. It, it'd wake you up with the little... That and because also it's be... small, it wouldn't blow. It wouldn't make your brains melt. Exactly. Your um, it would be able to. You could use it as an alarm system if someone was breaking in. You can have the banshee wailing at the top of your uh, at the top of its lungs. Uh, ah! They have uh, succubi and incubi, so they can uh, they kind of they wave at you and they're like hello, and uh, you know that's for that's for the eighteen plus crowd. But um, really, they're just there to kind of boost your confidence. You know, you're you're like hey, I'm gonna go out on a date, and they're like just remember walk with the you know with the proper posture, the back straight back, and be confident, be the man you want to be or woman. You know, so that's uh, up to you. Uh, the vampires are very uh, convenient. They have night vision, as everyone knows, because they're part bat, so mm -hmm. they can do the echolocation. So, you know, just take them with you on your Cub Scout adventures and have them guide you through the night and, you know, into the dark caves. And, mm -hmm. You yeah. know, I, I have, a, I have a, a grouchy werewolf Okay, that I, that I got. I specifically found one that was grouchy, um, and I keep it on my desk at work. And so, like, when people come up and they're irritating, I just kind of, like... I turn the grouchy royal off to face them, and then they just kind of leave. Mm, okay, right? sure. It's like, so I don't want to deal with you right now. Just <laughs> face my grouchy werewolf. I okay. feel like having a werewolf, a potted werewolf, is that similar to having, like, a piranha plant? Like, will it snap people's fingers off if they get too close? I mean, I assume. They're carnivorous. I think if they're well-fed, they have no reason to attack things. But, I mean, these are living, sentient creatures. They do have minds of their own, and they understand human language, so... You know, if you, if there's someone who's constantly annoying you, and they have a strong, and the potted werewolf has a strong psychic bond with you, there's a chance that they might try to stick up for you, and they do it in monstrous ways. These are, to be clear, these are not idle little playthings. These are dangerous creatures that have to be handled with care and with love, of course, because I, love cures the monstrous uh, darkness in their heart. Whenever I'm handling my my grouchy werewolf, I always wear chainmail. Yes, I le you know at least up to like my elbows. Yeah, I mean, I do the same when handling my cat. <laughs> That's, if you think about it, they're it's favorite. similar. Yeah, I also have to wonder. I haven't actually tried out the werewolf uh, myself. Um, I'm a I have a vampire myself, but. Is it always in werewolf mode, or is it usually just a guy? <laughs> and then when the full moon is open, do you have to have, like, a little, like, heat lamp? But instead of a heat lamp, it's, uh, it's moon, a moon UV rays? Yeah. yeah, no, actually, that's what what I do is, um, is, so he's normally just a human mode, and people are like, that's kind of weird. You got, like, half a man sticking out of a potted plant. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's that's odd, Curtis. And then, uh, and when they get start getting mad, I, I pull out the fake moon, and it, you know? Yep, they run away real fast. <laughs> Do you have to buy tiny shirts for him when he's a human to keep him decent? Yeah, but he goes through them really fast because he tears them every time he transforms. Oh, and... man. That's how these companies stay in business. They sell you all the accessories, but the accessories are flimsy uh -huh. and wear so, out quickly. The real monster was capitalism all along. <laughs> uh, well, what I've done is is uh, is I, I've, I've, I've found a way to help him like work out. So he can he so really, I got the shirts originally because he was a little self-conscious. And mm. uh, so now he what he does is uh, I 
just kind of tilt his pot over and he can do like push ups in that. From okay. The pot. That's pretty And clever. so he feels better about himself. So I, I'll put a shirt on him sometimes, but other times he's just like, yeah, you know what? Whatever. And I don't you, actually work here. <laughs> that's pretty great. I have actually heard, too, that they're working on miniature weights that they would be able to, you know, do some bicep curls and uh, some shoulder presses in their little tiny um, potted plant, you know, that sort of thing. Joel, yeah. I've got a question. Yeah, go ahead. From which company can our fine listeners purchase these delightful friends? And you know, accessories. <laughs> yeah, and accessories. The first thing that came to mind was Monsters Incorporated, but that is, in fact, something else. That's a movie. Please don't sue us, Pixar. Yes, we love your movies, especially the one, uh, they probably have one with the dog. All Thank right, you so on. much for making a fourth Toy Story. That's the movie we were all asking for. Cha-ching! All right, so you can find these fine products from Abyssal Friendly Monsters. That's right. Not only do they come from the Abyss, but you'll soon be shaking their hands and introducing them to your friends and family and coworkers. Please handle these monsters safely. We are not uh, liable for loss of limbs or souls. Terms and conditions apply. <laughs> and that's the ad. Welcome back to the podcast, everyone. Uh, I hope you had a good stretch break, maybe got some water. I don't hope that you stopped listening because there was an ad. That's how we make our money. Yes. All of the money that we make we from our many, many advertisements. Advertising space to very real product companies. As you can tell by the fact that we had a name for the place selling it from the beginning. Yes. Of yes. course. Yeah. And it, it was, there was, there was definitely not a Monsters Inc. joke in there. <laughs> so, uh, Luffy. We don't really know much about him. We've gotten flashbacks of Zoro's childhood, of Usopp's childhood, uh, Nami's, Chopper's, and um, uh, Sanji's. Is that the last one I'm missing? Anyways, but we haven't actually seen that many flashbacks of Luffy's childhood, other than when he met Shanks. But Ace wasn't in those flashbacks. And then when Ace shows up, he goes, oh yeah, I have a little brother, he's Luffy. And Luffy goes, oh, I I have an older brother, his name is Ace. Do you anticipate that there might be other members of Luffy's family that he just hasn't mentioned because he's a little carefree and scatterbrained? Yeah, you know what? It's definitely possible. I mean, he had a father at one point. And probably a mom, too, unless it's Buggy. Yeah. You know, I I wish somebody would give me like a five-paragraph essay so I can understand the possibility of Bucky being Luffy's mom. Uh, Yeah, but... How would you want one of his other family members to show up if he did have one? Just hypothetically say, yes, he has one more secret family member that's going to be important to the plot. I I think he should have a sister. And I think she should. what, what it should be is they should go to a town. And there's just, like, a badass chick, mm. like, oh, tearing things like, up. Okay. Um, one woman in the middle of, like, a hundred biker gang type you know, people. Yeah. And they're going in with chains but, and knuckles. But sort of like a silly, like, Jackie Stan, Jackie Chan style of fighting, right? Mm-hmm. Like, almost, like, they kind of, like, like, using people against themselves and kind of, like, semi, like, she's the type of person who would use, like, the, the drunken fighting style, okay. right? Um, and then, by, oh, yeah, that's my sister. Oh, man. Luffy's obsessed with meat. She could be obsessed with, like, booze. <laughs> that's Zoro. You just described Zoro as Luffy's sister. Uh, she that could be, checks out. <laughs> that, yeah. that, 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 maybe she could be into either like rice or some other component of like stir fry or something, and then you could find out that Ace likes one of the other components, and so by their powers combined, it's he, the family meal. She really likes sprouts. <laughs> and then when she finds out that they actually were mostly eating sprouts early on before they had a bunch of meat, mm, mm, then she gets mm. mad because she's like, whoa. Did you eat all the sprouts again, Luffy? <laughs> okay, and you said younger sister. I think... uh, well, I didn't put an age out. Oh, sorry. I said sister. Sister, would you prefer younger or older, and by like what margin? Are you um? Well, so like, he's, what's these? Uh, seventeen right now. And do we know how old Ace is? Ace is twenty-two, 19. isn't he? I thought he was only two years older than Luffy. Um, give me a second, and I'll look it up. A would you look at that? It's one of the autocorrects because I was just looking him up for the other. Oh, he was uh, 20. Yeah. So he was. Yeah. So three years. Okay. Um, ideally, I would like her to be in the middle, like the middle child. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like she'd have to either have to be. So she's older than Luffy, no matter what. I think Luffy's the youngest. Okay. Um, Youngest. He definitely gives enunciate. off hard baby of the family vibes. Yeah, no, he is definitely the youngest 
member of the whatever clan they are. <laughs> yeah, because as we pointed out, I don't remember if that was the episode we lost or the re-record, but Porcus D.A.'s uh, Monkey D. Luffy. We don't have any overlap in those names yeah. other than the D. Yeah. Um. I So she's either going to be the oldest or the middle, I think, is the best fit. Okay. I also could see it being a little wacky where she's the mature sister um, in terms of when they get into trouble, she's the one who's going to apologize and Luffy's going to be the one that's like, I'm going to bite and scratch my way out of this. Like, I'm a wild animal. But then it turns out she's actually a year or two younger, but she just mentally matured oh, past yeah. him at a super young age. She would get along so well with Nami if that were the case. They mm. wouldn't be sitting there, like, being refined ladies talking to each other while Luffy did something <laughs> stupid in the background. He's screaming at, like, a monkey wolf. <laughs> See, a monkey wolf. I, I'm thinking that, like, she is just as wild as Luffy is, and that Ace was the only one of them that ended up being, like, responsible <laughs> and respectable. Okay. On that note, do you think that Ace ever had a moment in his life when he was like Luffy and he just matured? Or do you think that he's always been as he as he was in these episodes? Um, probably when they were younger, but I think he grew out of it Pretty earlier than Luffy has. <laughs> okay, do you think that if we ever get a, and a Harry Potter 7 style flash forward at the end of the story, and for some reason, sorry, when I say for some reason... Let's assume that Luffy survives, because he might not. He might lose his life in the final battle. Mm -hmm. But uh, do you want him to be more serious like Ace in his older age? Uh... I, I think it'd be nice if he matured a little bit. Like, not not, not lost, like, his childlike heart, but mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. was, like, better able to, like... Con control it yeah you know the word competent floated through my mind a second there and then turned into mist and floated away i just don't know if i want to call him out like that because i really do wonder how much mm -hmm. of his ability to save the different villages and towns and countries he's gone to is because of yeah. some of his other traits i think i set this off mic uh they've been really heavy in the alabasta arc of the crew member is pointing out how incompetent Luffy, their captain, is. They've hit it hard the last eight or so episodes. And I'm yes. curious if that keeps it up or if they're like going through like they're out of the honeymoon period and they're like, I got to like settle down into a new. Do you anticipate a, a conflict where they're like, we can't stay with you if you're if you're this stupid? I, I'm curious if it's leading to that. OK. Or or if he proves himself like reliable enough in other ways that they're like, yeah. Maybe somebody else will show up, and they'll be laughing, and they'll be like, ha ha ha, your captain is so stupid, and Luffy's separated from them because he's fighting somebody else. And they'll be like, what did you flip and say about our captain, you slug monster? And then they'll punch him. I can't believe you just spoiled the slug monsters. That's my favorite. The Okay, my three favorite animals in all of One Piece. The hiking bear, the kung fu dugong, the slug monster. Joel. Are there slug monsters in One Piece? <laughs> you still haven't answered the question of are there robots? I think it's robots. Yeah. yeah. Are there robots in One Piece, Joel? Are We're there? just going to have to watch and find out. <sighs> Waffo. Okay. Does anyone have any final thoughts for our 100th episode? 100! Woo! Do you guys want to play a game? Maybe. Really short game? Okay. Sure. Here's how this is going to go down, Joel. You and I just going to throw some trivia questions at Curtis. We're going to see how well he does. And it's just <clears> going to be about what he's seen. Yeah, okay. Yeah? So, <laughs> no, uh, it's going to be about everything except for the sure. first hundred episodes. Yeah. Who is the leader of the first division of the Whitebeard Pirates? I don't know. <laughs> Curtis, uh, who are the warlords of the sea that you know of so far? Oh, uh, you want me to list them? Um, so we got, we've got uh, Crocodile. Yep. We've got Mihawk. There you uh -huh. go. Um, uh, not Shanks. He is nope. not one of them. Uh, there oh, was... he might be. We don't oh, know where that's Shanks true. Is I think there's only two that we have by name. One more. One more. He. We haven't met him though. We only know them by name. He came up in the um. Arlong Park. Thank you. The Arlong Park arc. I don't think that you're going to get it if you. Get oh, it it's the one head. that they. It's the, that's right. It's the one that that Arlong branched off of. He's another fish man. Um. I don't remember his name. Do you want to phone a friend? 
Well, I only have two other people here. Which I only you have like two friends confirmed on pod. No, no, the, I, <laughs> I, I have two. Okay, let me call up uh, Caitlin, uh, Caitlin or Clayson, and see if they remember. <laughs> um, oh, I don't know if I can put those names on. Wait, I, I think it'll be fun. Oh, okay, well, uh, it's Jim Bay. Oh, no. hey, hey, I just phoned a friend, Cat. Yeah, it's it's Jim Bay. Oh, okay, thank you, friend. A thousand poke coins, Joel. I don't know why I said poke coins. Do That's you actually ask a lot. Us the next question. <laughs> um. All right. So let me. I'm gonna just um um. What is MH five? <laughs> it is a branch of. The Navy. NH5 is the poison gas that uh, Don Creed used to poison the Baradia. I wouldn't have gotten that one right. I thought MH stood for Marine Headquarters. That was a good question. (laughs) (laughs) I have been told by exactly one person that it's fun to make her to squirm um, by asking him questions that he obviously can't answer, so... Continue. Yeah, uh, this is a question related to something you talked about on the podcast rather than the show itself. How many flying type devil fruits are there? Joel told you this one on mic when you were discussing one of the specials that you watched. How many the flying bat. types? I don't know. It's low. It's in the Three. single digits. A little higher than that, but seven. Close. In the middle. Take the average. Five. Yeah, there you go. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Final question. What is the greatest magic of all? Friendship. That's not from One Piece. Dreams. Oh, oh, there's one. Recite the opening bit from the sea <laughs> <laughs> Uh Destiny. Dreams. Fate. I think it's fate. Fate dreams. dreams. These unstoppable. Something, something, ideals something will never be. fade from the earth. <laughs> These unstoppable <laughs> ideals <laughs> are held <laughs> deep <laughs> in the heart of man. <laughs> as long as there are people who seek freedom in this life, these things shall not vanish from the earth. Thank you for participating in my game. Uh, you know, absolutely. Um, what should you do if you want Gold Rogers' treasure? Uh, you wait. So actually, I don't remember what you're supposed to do. I just remember he said he said, uh, "If you want it, I left it all in one place. You'll have to find it." First. Oh, so you have yeah. to find it. So just go look track. for it. I guess. Wait, I is that know. the is that the is that That's the answer you're looking it. for? Oh, okay. I, mean, I was just I was trying to. I didn't. I didn't actually think about the rest of the opening. I just oh, was okay. like, I wonder if you'll recognize the I, opening. I was like, did he give more specific instructions? Like you, ter- you. You uh you you keep going. You take a left at the weird shaped rock. And then... <laughs> if it was that easy, anyone could have become pirate king since the late Gold D. Roger. This question will very likely be edited out. Here is a trick question for you, Curtis. I will give you a multiple choice answer. There will be four, so let me finish. So far, how many members of the uh, Roger Pirates have you met in One Piece? A. One. B. Seven. C. Three. D. Six. A. A. Was that one? Yeah. I'm sorry. That's not the correct answer, Jimmy. Can I take a crack at it? Yes. Three. Yes. You want to hazard a guess no. who they are? Okay. Well, this goal was... D. Ah, oh, shit. No, how many... Sorry. How many alive members... Oh. How many characters has Luffy and his crew met that uh, were from the gold okay. Roger Pirates? Or the Roger Pirates is what they were officially called. Not Shanks. Maybe Shanks? Mayor Boodle and Miss Kaya. Also the guy on a unicycle. Wait. <laughs> Composite the... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're, you're making my chain. Oh. <laughs> yes! 
I, was, I thought you were serious for a second. That definitely needs to stay on. Oh, that's staying. I was like no Mayor Boodle, what. and I was trying to remember who Ms. Kaya was again. That's and... Uzal's girlfriend. Oh, yeah, or right. his oh, friend. oh, okay. I would have given it away if I remember who it was. The <laughs> final <laughs> riddle, children. There are two in every room and one in every corner. What is it? Shadow. Why would it be a shadow? What did you? What do you mean? Why would it be a shadow? You asked a riddle. The answer could literally be Abraham Lincoln's butt, and that would almost be. <laughs> Wait, are there two Abraham Lincoln's butts butt in, in every, every room? room? Yeah, it's not actually a physical thing. It's like this ethereal energy. That um. it is. An edge. I don't know. See, the thing that tripped me up when I first heard this riddle is how can there be one in every single corner yeah. when there are usually four corners in a room, but there's only two in every room. Well, there's two actually eight, eight corners in a room if it's a square room. If you count the ceiling. Tingle, yeah. I'm going to give I it away no if nobody no... else has any fun guesses like um, Abraham Lincoln's butt. Wait. You don't, you don't want to like leave this to the Twitter followers to see if anyone will tweet the answer. Oh, but they can just Google it, you filthy cheaters. Tell us. Whoa, be nice to them. They pay our taxes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, the answer is the letter O. Ah. That's not a riddle. <laughs> yes, it is. No. It's there perfectly... are two in every... If what do I have in my pocket is a riddle... No, it's that's the... also not a riddle. <laughs> it's a riddle. That's my final thought. Any others? I think that's the... Do, 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 do. Final, final thought. thought. Thanks, everyone. Outro goes here. In this episode, uh, Joel has a brain fart and just stares into the world around him. (laughs) So ends the next leg of the King of the What Now adventure. We're sad to see you go, but we'll be here next week. If you crave some social interaction with us in the meantime, you can find us on all sorts of different media. We have Gmail, Patreon, and Tumblr. All of those are King of the What Pod. King of the What Pod at gmail.com, patreon.com slash king of the what pod, king of the what pod dot tumblr dot com. Our Twitter handlers are a little bit different. You can reach me at K O T W N underscore pod. And you can contact me, Curtis, at Pirate Co host. Also, please take a moment to rate and review our podcast on whatever platform you're using to listen. Not only will this help others find the podcast, but your constructive feedback will help us improve the show as we go. Thanks so much for giving us a listen. Until next time, follow your dreams and protect your treasure. Remember, it doesn't need to be literal treasure.